If you are still using Automatic 1111, you are betting on a dead horse. So today I want to show you Fort UI, which is the new king in the castle, much better and much more often updated. Let's get started. Everything starts at the GitHub page for Forge UI. And here you get a load of information, very nice details. The first thing we want to do is to scroll down over this information and go here to installing Forge. And there the first link you can see is a one-click package. It includes CUDA 12.1, PyTorch 2.3.1, Everything you need is in one folder. So that is very nice. Now, when you download that folder, it has a seven set format. So you might want to use either something that can uncompress seven set or you want to use WinRAR, which is free. So I would suggest to use that very reliable and fast. Once you have unpacked that folder, you want to put that to your main drive if you want to put it there. And in there, you can find the run bed and the update bed. By the way, I renamed my folder to Fort.ui just to make it a little bit easier for me to find that. Now, the first thing you want to do is to run the update bed. So you get an updated version of everything you have in there. And then you want to run the run bed, which is also doing some setting up for you. It's downloading a model for you. And everything is pretty fast and easy, basically. And then it is already starting the UI. Now, when you're using the UI, you should feel right at home because it really looks mostly like automatic 1111 plus some really cool new features. For example, up here you can see you can switch between SD 1.5 and 2.1 and you can switch to XL and also Flux is supported even for the new model that is for 6 gigabyte graphics cards. I'm going to show you how to set that up too. And the interface down here is changing a little bit based on what kind of model you select up here and also loading some settings like the image size for you. Then down here, you have the classic settings for the sampler, for the width and height. You have a higher res fix. You have here the different CFG scales. Flux has this distilled CFG scale that you're mainly using and the seed and so on. Then you have a lot of integrated stuff down here that you can find, of course, including control net that you can use. It's very nicely done. It works very well. Of course, you want to put the control net models into the control net folder. And when you first time use it, it's going to download the pre processors for you. So that might be a little bit slower at the first time but all of that works really nice and of course when you go up here you have all of the tabs that you expect for example you have here image to image you can do checkpoint merge if you want you have settings here that are nicely organized there's also a search for the settings and you have also the extensions which you can of course install from the available extensions, when you load this here, you can see it loads a list and you have an install button here on the right side, or you can install it from the URL just as you are used from Automatic 11.11, but this is updated much more often. And because of that has more of the new technologies that you want to use. And with Flux, you can create beautiful images like this here that has a little bit of a Warhammer wipe uh, mixed with some fantasy level from maybe Skyrim. So that's pretty nice. But let's have a quick look at where you actually get the models. Now, when you only use automatic 1111, I would actually suggest to you that you move all of your models over to Forge UI and delete automatic 1111 or maybe keep it around just so you have a backup if you miss something 
in the old automatic 1111 now inside of Forge UI you also have the web UI folder when you open that up you also have here the models folder and when you open that up you will find in here all of the models that you expect like for example control net or the upscaler models you have here your loras your stable diffusion models you have here your vaes so basically everything you are looking for on the other hand if you don't want to do that right away you can link to the automatic 1111 folder the way you do that is again go to the Forge UI base folder then to the web ui folder scroll down and here you find the web ui user.bat you want to right click and then open this up i have the free notepad plus plus which is very nice because it also color codes what you're seeing in there and with that you have this list down here that you can also extend if you want to now this list is going to be green and on the left side of each of the lines it says at rem now you have to remove the at rem from each of these lines because what this does is it quotes it out and basically makes it inactive now the first thing you want to do is to set up here the home folder for your automatic 1111 and one thing that is really important is that you have here these slash signs they have to go from the lower left to the upper right not the other way around like windows is doing it and also at the end you want to leave the name open without one of these slash signs and then below here when you have here the different directories you can see that it starts with the percentage sign automatic 1111 underscore home percentage sign and this is basically loading this address here on your drive so that you can load the different folders for example i also added here the vae directory to the list which wasn't here to begin with so you have a lot of flexibility and by the way one tip i can give you here is you could actually put your models on an extra drive in a unified folder so that every ui you install is linking to that specific folder with all of your models in there that might make it a little bit more organized you're not bound to having it inside of any of these ui folders if you don't want to of course when you're finished with all of the setup here you want to save the file up here with this button and then of course load it by going to the forge ui base folder and double clicking on run bat and that should load everything for you just fine now let's talk about using flux inside of forge ui you have here the quick list this is on top of the install list and here you have two different links for flux one is for the nf4 model this is the new model there's even a version 2 of that model and this works with 6 gigabyte graphics card so that's pretty handy also the file size is much smaller with only about 11 gigabytes and i think it also renders a little bit faster and below that you have here uh, the setup for the classic model so I'm going to click on that link first and when we do that you have here a very nice explanation about how to use everything and one thing you see here in these screenshots is that you can load in the VAE multiple models at the same time and that is actually necessary to use it with flux and also when you scroll down a little bit more you have here the different download files but also so the folders where that information goes that's pretty important so that you have here the base model in the model stable diffusion folder the vae in the models vae folder and then the clip l and t5 model into the models text encoder folder if you don't have any of these folders you can create them inside of the models folder now when you click up here on the links you can see the for the vae there is a a e save tensor file so you want to click here on the first link this is bringing you here to the flux one depth folder you want to scroll down and here you see the a e save tensor file you want to download that because i downloaded another file before 
that was also a VAE for ConfUI. It didn't work. It gave me a black image. So this works better even with the NF4 version 2 model. So I would suggest to you, instead of downloading the Flux 1 depth model that has 24 gigabytes almost, that you go instead to this link that I will put below the video, of course. And here you have the Flux 1 depth BNB NF4 version 2 save tensor file. This is a Flux model. It has only 12 gigabytes, so basically half the size. And this is also good because it loads with slower older graphics cards. When you have everything in the right folders and you start Forge UI again, you will see here in the VAE tab that you have a list here with the different models and you can choose as much as you want from that list. But for Flux, what we need is only these three models. So I'm using the Clipvision L Safe Tensor. I'm using the T5XXL FP16 Safe Tensor model and the AE Safe Tensor model. This is the VAE. The two others are clip models or text models. And then over here, you can see from my list of checkpoints, I am loading the Flux 1 BNB NF4 version 2. And then you can simply play around, experiment with everything. Everything else works just as in Automatic 11.11. And you even have down here your scripts where you can select, for example, the XYZ plot to render through different settings, different models, anything you want, and get a grid afterwards to compare the results. So it is very, very useful. And of course, another thing you can do is that you save over here different styles and you will find that there is a bunch of styles already integrated for you. Look at that long list of styles. Experiment with that, have your fun and check out what kind of wonderful things you can create with this. So this is a wonderful alternative for everybody who is overwhelmed with ConfUI, but still wants the choice of having all these settings and extensions and possibilities, image to image, in painting, upscaling, face detailing, all these kind of cool stuff you can do in Forge UI. Check it out. All the links are below my video. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and maybe subscribe to my channel if you want to see more like that. See you soon. Bye.